What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 67 of our Road to Glory career mode. This episode has a lot to come, so make sure you stay tuned in it. We've got some massive sales, £180 million worth of talent will be leaving the club. We've also got some big incomings as well, so we've got that to look forward to. Alongside that, we have the second leg of the semi-finals against Manchester United to see if we can reach the Carabao Cup finals. So... A lot to come, but as I mentioned, £180 million worth of talent may be leaving the club. Well, Jay Green, I spoke about this in a previous episode. I was talking about the fact that even though he's 90 rated, he just doesn't play that way. He sometimes goes missing in games. He's useless as well at times. And I just feel like overall for a 90 rated keeper, he's not exactly what you would say is class. So we got an offer here from Spurs. He just recently signed a new five-year deal, so it was worth a lot of money. For 49.5 million was his current value. They offered somewhere in the region of 60 something. But I was more thinking to myself, 110, 120 is what he was worth. Never expecting them to accept that. I counted and they said okay to the 110 million pound counter offer. So I was sat there thinking to myself, what do we do now? Because if that goes through for Spurs, we have sold one of our best players, but. 110 million is a lot of money, and I'm quite happy to have that happen, considering the fact we can replace him quite easily with another world-class goalkeeper. Then I got an offer for Reese Nelson, another player who I was kind of thinking to myself, not necessarily needed at the club, so I counter-offered that as well, and unbelievably to that, Atletico said yes. So in the space of literally minutes, we'd seen a 110 million pound offer from Spurs go ahead, and Reese Nelson, 70 million to Atletico Madrid. And as you can see there with that message, Jay Green's deal went through. So he's now a Spurs player. And even though for us he had those games where he just didn't really perform, you can guarantee when we do play against Spurs, he's going to pop up and probably have the game of his career. Just that is the confirmation anyways. Maybe it's a bad decision. Maybe it's a great decision. Let me know what you guys think. But I just personally think that that is a decent bit of business, honestly. Um, the 21-year-old really hasn't performed great since he's been at the club. Um, my ambition was, as I said, to try and replace him anyways. So to get that kind of money, I was quite happy with it. And you've got to replace quality with quality. But I think we've replaced quality with even better quality. Gianluigi Donnarumma, of course, needs no introduction. You guys know about this kid. He is special. He's definitely going to be a bright star for the future. Only 23 years of age in this series now. And uh, he's worth around about 73.5 million. So worth more than Green was. He is two overalls higher. Yet we've managed to uh, secure an 85 million pound deal with Milan. So unbelievably, 25 million pound less than what Spurs paid us for Jay Green. And he's two overalls higher. So Gianluigi Donnarumma is now our number one goalkeeper. Spurs, you didn't do very good business, I don't think, because you could have got Donnarumma, and yet you got Green for 110 million. Well, we went and stuck up Donnarumma for 85. So I think we have the miles better business there. Hopefully you guys agree. A new keeper, a 92 rate goalkeeper as well. Sensational stuff. And he starts in the first game of the episode today up against Chelsea. You can see the lineup there popping up on your screen. You'll see it further when we get into game. But ultimately, £110 million pounds for, uh, for Green. And we might be seeing Reese Nelson also leave for around about £70 million. Pounds. Absolute scenes in the episode. £180 million between two players. It's crazy stuff. But it's first versus second here, which is why I went ahead and played this one. A debut for Donnarumma. The number one here at Crew now. And the back four remains unchanged. Midfield three unchanged as well. And the front three unchanged, I do believe. Fratchak starting for us. For Chelsea, it's the five at the back we're used to seeing. And he really didn't play dividends to Chelsea because, once again, I was able to control the game. And Crew Alexandra came out flying. Dominic Calvert-Lewin gave us the lead in the first half. A lovely left-footed finish towards the bottom corner inside the first 16 minutes. And I was actually looking at Courtois as well as a potential replacement for Green in the end. I did choose Donnarumma. And in the end, I believe I chose right because... Uh, not a lot that Courtois could have done against a finish like this, but I just feel like overall Donnarumma at this stage now is probably the world's best goalkeeper, certainly up there. So, yeah, I, I personally think we've done correct there, in my opinion. But even with that, you know, Carver Lewin giving us the lead. Uh, ultimately, this game was always going to be pretty much a one-way show. The way they line up with a five at the back, it's so easy for us to have this front three and just be able to 
Great chances and just get on the front foot. And Donnarumma was actually called upon. He made a save in the earlier part of this one. Not the most difficult save in the world, but he still made one. So I thought I'd throw that in there just to show you as well. Maybe Green wouldn't have saved that. But again, 34 minutes into it. Nelson whips a great delivery in towards Calvert-Lewin. And he really should have made it 2-0, doubling his advantage. But he headed over the top of the crossbar. And this might be Reese Nelson's final appearance for the club as well. Fratchak here, nice one too with Calvert Lewin. He gets in and the pole gets another goal. How many's that now for him? I think that may well be his ninth goal of the season in the Premier League. So he is on fire. And I've said this so many times. I just don't know why he has a two-star weak foot because it's not a two-star. I'd at least give it three. He's decent. He, he can hit shots on both feet. There are times when you can tell that it is a two-star, but ultimately, more or less, he kind of is around that three-star stage. Like, I don't know sometimes whether or not I should be hitting on his left or the right. And, of course, even though I've checked what foot he is, I sometimes forget. So I actually don't 100% know when I'm playing in-game. Maybe I need to check it again. But still, 2-0 to us. We were winning the game quite comfortably. And overall, it was an easy victory, this one. Chelsea not really giving us a lot of a test, even though they are second place and challenging very well. You see by the match facts, possession-wise, dominated. Chances-wise, dominated. So, very happy with that one there. We still have the transfer window as well. But after that, Reese Nelson's move was complete. So, that was the final game that he would feature in, for now, in a Crew Alexandra shirt. He joins Atletico Madrid, who are actually our opponents for the final game of the episode today in our Champions League round of 16 first leg. So, maybe we'll see him start that game. Although, he should be cup-tied for it, if that is a thing. Pretty sure it doesn't exist in FIFA, but in real life, he would be cup-tied having played in the Champions League for us. So he wouldn't be allowed, but still, he might do. At that point, we had about £80 million pounds to spend, and I was thinking, what on earth do I buy? I tried to sign Mbappe, because if you look at this, he's actually got a release clause of £72 million, pounds, and he's worth £121. But I couldn't do it, because he has a contract expiring. So I couldn't actually get out of that screen to activate the release clause. So in the end, I was like, I can't afford the 600 grand a week wage. But what I can do is I can afford Christian Pulisic's wage. £83,000 a week he was on at Munch and Gladbach. He's a few ratings less than Mbappe, but he does a similar job. And we did actually negotiate the deal for him. So next season, we'll have Pulisic joining the club. And that was a pretty much straight replacement for Reese Nelson in many ways. Who, of course, plays a similar position. And that is that. So at that stage, I still had a bit of money left. And I was thinking, what do we need to strengthen? And then I realised we actually don't have a traditional CDM who can sit there and just dominate the game from the back. And I found this man, Dennis Zakaria, 26 years of age, 86 rated, playing for Udinese. He's six foot three with a four star weak foot. And I thought, yes, please. So I went ahead, negotiated the deal. It was around about 42 million pounds with Udinese for his signature. He then agreed to the contract and became a crew Alexandra player. So my CDM for now, is going to be Zachariah. We, of course, have got Lewis Cook, who joins us next season. We've got Pulisic, who joins us next season. And we have Griezmann, who joins us next season. So they are the other ones that are coming on pre-contracts. And I don't know what we're going to do for attackers next season, because, uh, you know, Pulisic is there. Griezmann's there. We've got Donny still, Isaac Martin, El Ghazi, Fratjak, Calvert-Lewin. There's so many forwards at the club ahead of next season. But I will be able to pretty much, I think, get most of them game time anyways. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And with that, we had the second leg to come here at home against Manchester United. Zachariah actually starts in this and makes his club debut. And this is a big game for him to, uh, to make a debut. And imagine coming straight to a team and starting in the semi-finals of a competition. Well, that's what Zachariah finds himself in. And to be honest, he actually had a very, very good game overall. Did what I wanted and did what I expected of him. We should have taken the lead, though, right on the stroke of half-time. Isaac Martin... Going close there as David De Gea makes a save. But into the second half we went. It was another commanding, dominating performance from us. Isaac Martin eventually does give us the lead with about 16 minutes left. A lovely turn. Great footwork. And finishes it off as well with his left foot. But again, I go back to my point. We controlled this game so, so well. The midfield three that we have currently going on. In this particular game, we had Gruwich. Um, I'm oh, sorry, no. This particular game, we had Delgado, Zachariah and uh, Santos Canadeas. And they just seemed to gel really well. They were knocking the ball about, being able to keep it against Man United. But we were even better against Chelsea, where we had Evans, Barca, Villa and Gruwich. Those three guys were sensational. They controlled the game really, really well. And we did it again in this one, this time though with Delgado. But with that, I couldn't actually keep the clean sheet. Geddes getting through, great one-handed save from Donnarumma. But then Kingsley Coleman completely free in the penalty area. 
pulls one back for Manchester United. And as it stands, that could be a big goal. And surely there's not enough time for Man United to go grab another one because, you know, we, we had two minutes left on the clock at that point. And rightfully so, they didn't. We were able to stop them from getting anything out of the game. And ultimately now, we head through to a Carabao Cup final. And I think the hard part's done. I say that. We might end up losing it, of course. That will be played next episode because it is earlier than the end of the season. It will be live as well for you to enjoy. So hopefully you will. And we will be taking on Southampton for that one. So I'm excited to see if we can beat them and win our last remaining trophy that we need to win in England. And then we'll pretty much have done everything with Crew Alexander that we set out to do. So very, very good indeed. And it will be Southampton that we do take on for that final. As I said, dominated the game. 69% of the play in that one. Very similar to the stats that we showed against Chelsea, apart from the fact we didn't create as many chances. We then had an FA Cup fourth round tie against Burnley, which, as you know, I'm not really interested. So I simmed it. I actually named a really strong team and we went on to lose it by a goal to nil. Um, a penalty in the 10th minute. Sinking us, and as I said, even though I had like that, I had a really strong team out, so a bit surprised that we actually went away with a defeat there. And then I made this signing happen, I had to do it, guys. I watched the World Cup when I was recording this video, and uh, Mexico were playing Germany. I just had to do it, you know what I'm saying? Hervin Lozano scored the goal in that game, they won 1 0 Mexico for anybody who wasn't aware. So I had to make Hervin Lozano my signing, didn't I? I actually looked to bring him in for money because I had a little bit left, and when I went to look at him in the actual search list. He had a contract expiring, so I just thought, why not? You know what I'm saying? Let's add another attacker to the mix for next season. So uh, there's going to be some probably definite changes coming in. Maybe a few faces will leave the club because we don't need as many attackers as we currently have here. So we'll see who leaves, who stays, and what's what. But yeah, that was very World Cup themed there because that was inspired by his performance earlier. Probably wouldn't have done it had he have not... Um, scored in the World Cup moments before, but still. We then took on Newcastle, drew 2-2, Fratchak scoring twice, but Catrone ended up, uh, you know, negating both those goals as we only got a point. After that was Arsenal, we won this one by three goals to one, though. Another Fratchak double takes him now to 13 goals for the season. So he is the top scorer in the Premier League. Very, very good indeed. And then it was Man United, and I don't know what's wrong with us, but Man United are 8th place going into this. There's no way why we shouldn't be able to beat them. We've shown we can do it in the Carabao Cup, and yet we lost 2-0. So, I didn't want to play them again. I'd already played them in the Carabao Cup, so I just decided to sim it, make it a little bit different. And I guess you could say I was made to pay for it, so that is what it is. But next up, and the final game coming at you today, is going to be Atletico Madrid. It is the round of 16 of the Champions League. Griezmann, who will come to Crew Alexandra next season, starts in their lineup. Of course, that's ours. Barso Villa, Zachariah, and Gruwich starting our midfield. No place for Evans. And there is a place on the bench for Reese Nelson. Alongside that was actually Robert Lewandowski. We've already featured against him when we played Bayern, but he's now playing his trade for Atletico. I think that was a January move made as well by him. So. Maybe we'll see him come up against us again in this particular game. And there is that place, as I said, for the ex-crew Reese Nelson on the bench. No place for him to start, though. We should have taken the lead through Calvert-Lewin, who ended up heading straight at Oblak there, which was frustrating. And then a moment of madness from me. There's 26 minutes on the clock. Gruwich slides in, doesn't win the ball. Ball's already gone. And he gets a red card. And at this point, I just kind of... Uh, I didn't really know what to do. Because... When I looked at it back, they're not, they're not breaking away. It's not the worst tackle in the world. And I've seen, you know, other tackles that are worse than that already get a warning. So I was kind of sat there thinking to myself, that's a pretty harsh red card. Like, there's not a lot in that. I mean, yes, it's a definite foul. It's probably definitely a yellow card. But a red, that's a little bit harsh, man. So we are down to 10 men. And we now have the job of basically trying not to concede an away goal because we are playing at home for this one. So, my only aim after that, for the last 60 minutes of this game, was to switch to the 4-3-1-2, play the free midfield, two up top, and literally try and hit them on the counter. That was legit all I was trying to do. And it went to the second half before I managed to actually create a chance. Calvert-Lewin hitting his shot towards the goalkeeper, but with that, actually, we played unbelievably well in this second half. The two up top, Fratjak and Calvert-Lewin, were causing so many problems for Atletico. The pace was just sensational. The one-twos between them and then the runs in behind, they couldn't contend with it. But the problem was, with us having 10 men, there are moments in the game where this happens. And Iannaccio gets a little bit lucky to get the ball back and then his effort goes goal bound. But Florian Haas slides in, takes him out. It's a penalty kick and we now have basically undone all the hard work that we did because we spent a long period of time 
being tight, being compact, hitting them on the counter when we should, being actually in the game, and then we may have lost it with a moment of madness again. So Ianacho stepped up against Donnarumma. Can he write his name in the crew history books already? Nope, because Ianacho would hit the post from his spot kick. Relief came over me, and I just thought that's a little bit of luck that we needed. With 18 minutes to go, we are still in the game at 0-0. Zachariah into Rodriguez, who came off the bench. He finds Fratchak. Fratchak lays it to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin on the ball, lays it back to the pole, and it just is meant to be. With 13 minutes left, it is crew one, Atletico nil. I spoke about the fact that Atletico was struggling with the two up the top. Maybe I need to play two up top more often because it really did create many chances in this game, and eventually we took one. Fratchak, our number nine, getting set through by our number 10. And even though we could have conceded that away goal and we could have actually been one down ourselves, we went one nil in front. So we have the advantage going into the second leg. And as Haas clears that one away, it is advantage crew. Means, of course, the red card to Grich means he will not play in that second leg. But it doesn't matter because we have Zachariah, Evans and Basso Villa that can play that midfield role. So very good result. All things considered, after that red card, I wasn't expecting to come away with the win. I was settling for the nil-nil draw. I tried to stay tight and compact. You can see by the match facts, not as much possession, but still able to create chances and be in the game. Nevertheless, guys, that is how we'll end today's episode. Let me know what you think of the deals that we did today. Do you think I did right? Do you think I did wrong? Should I have kept hold of a few players? Let me know down below. But still, thank you so much for your support, as usual. It means so much to me, guys. And thank you for watching the video. I'd like it be greatly appreciated if you did enjoy it. And I will catch you all again from tomorrow at 4 p.m. for yet another video. Stay tuned, guys. I'll see you all then. Adios.